Hola. Hey guys. I'm Hillary. And I'm Milka. And we are going to show you guys our seats. Baker Creek Seat Hall. Glorious. This is the first video we've ever made and so no one will probably watch it, but we decided that since we've got all these amazing seeds that we're going to start here in a little bit, that we may as well make the video so we can see. So, yeah, Baker Creek. Ready? You guys ready for this? I don't really want to make them fall. Should I make them fall? Go ahead. <laughs> There's a lot of seeds. There's a lot of seeds happening today. Thank you for your order. Oh, sweet. Hope you enjoy our seeds. Please let us know if you have any questions. Why don't you show that to the to the camera? It says, thank you for your order. What kind of seeds are? The guy with his sweet watermelon on his head. This is a free seed packet that we got. That was like additional to what we ordered. Um, it's uh, purple Prussian tomato. Sweet, very exciting. So, we're not gonna really go through this in any particular order. A lot of these seeds Malachi hasn't really seen yet. So it'll be fun for him to kind of go through them. Um, but I've seen most of them. Harry. But our plan is to grow them here at our house, which we have a small a third of an acre yard here in the, ci in the city, pretty much. We live near Grand Rapids. Um, but we also have a school garden that we're starting. And so I thought, since we're starting a school garden, it might be really interesting for people to see how we go about doing this um, and our successes and our failures, because I personally think that Having a school garden is going to be really cool to see the kids get plugged into um, the earth and recycling and just being purposeful about where our food comes from, learning about what different foods taste like and and how to do it. So um, so here we go. Learn with us. Um, I'm calling. Uh, we don't know what we're going to call the school garden yet, but uh, we'll keep you in the loop once we pick out a name. Um, so, without Got further ado, fall. thank you. We have a bunch of free seeds, but why don't we start by picking out? Do you want to organize it by type, or do you want to just go one at a time? Because there are some types of things that we got. Okay, here's the handy, the special thing. Okay. So I'll start. So number one, we got a lot of things. So this is gonna be a long video. Um, number one we got is gourds. Uh, that are loofah gourds, so you can grow them and then um, dry them out and use them as sponges. I thought this would be really, really cool for kids to try to do in our garden, possibly grow them on a trellis, an arch tre trellis, um, so that we can repurpose them and use them. Um, and I saw that they do grow on vines, which I thought was really cool. So pretty excited about that. We've got, this is one that I'm like super excited about. I really hope it goes well. Um, winged beans. I'm like, look at the color of the, of the little flowers on it too. This is going to be exciting. Um, it's very prolific, it says, uh, and grows on a vine or like, uh, I think that it's a vine. I should probably read. <laughs> yeah, trellis long vines. Um, but... They said it tastes really good, and so that's part of the the like purpose of, of starting this school garden is also to teach kids how to eat healthy food and how to love healthy food, hopefully. hopefully. Um, next year, we're thinking about starting a class along with healthy cooking with the produce that we um, create. But we also have two events planned as well. One is a grow night for our whole group to come together and plant the garden. Hopefully that goes according to plan. And then also a harvest in the end of fall. Um, our school is unique because it's on a balanced calendar, which means it's year round. Um, but we can talk more about that another time, but that really pairs well with having a garden. So, wing beans, super excited. I think the kids will like it. Did you see how fuzzy they are? I'm really excited about it. Are you gonna eat them? 
Yes. All right. Next one we've got is uh, a pepper, and it's a fish pepper. Uh, they've got the var variegated leaves, I think is how you say it. Um, so it's multicolored, like the light and the dark, the light green and the dark green, kind of like white, and so are the peppers as well. They are a spicy pepper, which I'm Actually. not doing a ton of for the school garden, but the history behind these things are so, so cool. Um, I can tell you more about them, but if you go on Baker Creek's website, they have this whole big long paragraph about the history that they almost went extinct and that they're, they're just really tied to American history and African American history, which I just think this is awesome. You know a lot so, about seeds. Yeah, I am a walking encyclopedia. Yeah, this is, uh, is this a free one? Oh, choy. very cool. This is purple bok choy. So this is another new one from... Um, Baker Creek. I don't know why it doesn't have um, a pretty purple package. Maybe they ran out, but um, I love bok choy. When we go to the, the Chinese food buffet, what do I always get? Bok choy. I get bok choy. And so um, I'm really excited about the purple. Again, I think this will be something fun to cook up for the kids that they'll really enjoy eating it. Um, I can't remember if these were ones. I'm fairly certain. Yes. Okay. So these are a squash, the Lady Godiva, which really they look like pumpkins to me, like little pumpkins with green stripes, which are really, you know, pumpkins are pumpkins, but any pumpkin with some variation is pretty cool. But these are naked seed pumpkins. So when you carve them out, you can cook up the seeds as is, and um, you don't have to worry about the chewy, like woody hull. So, again, I thought for a cooking class for the kids to enjoy something healthy straight from the garden, uh, this would be a good one to go with. What next? What's next, Mel? What should we do? Beans? Beans. Oh, category of beans. All right, so we've got the, Lime. I don't know how to say this, but it's Curzer. Calago Traveler. Calico. Calico. Cruise. Curzer. Curzer Calico. Traveler Beans. Um, I think these look awesome. I had a really good friend of mine growing up um, that used to make Christmas lima beans and she put them in this dish with sausage, baked beans, and the, the Christmas beans were in there. But these are said to be really good for Michigan. I think the guy that developed them is from Michigan. And since we're growing in a Michigan climate, I thought best to go with something that we know is going to do really well here. Um, the next one I'm going to show, we got green beans, greasy grits. Um, they're classic. supposed to be classic, classic greasy grits. Uh, they're supposed to be um, really nutty. It says superior nutty mellow umami flavor and that they're sought after by chefs and things like that. And so again, I thought if we're going to grow green beans, we should grow green beans that are unique and, and yum for the kids. Um, and they just look really fine and delicate. We love green beans in our house. Like, love green beans. From my husband, who doesn't eat vegetables, to my daughter, who doesn't necessarily always eat vegetables, to us, that we eat anything. Right, Malachi? Yeah. All veggies are fair game to us. Um, but I thought this would be a cool thing to try and, and just also to share with friends and things like that. So, hopefully they go, go as well. All right, the next group we have is all peas. So, I'm going to show you a couple things. Peas. Would you say that's one of our most favorite things to grow? Yes. They're like best. I say our family, like every year, if, if we have nothing else, we grow peas, I'd say. Um, so we got some unique ones. I got the, this one is just like a shelling pea. It says peas, Lincoln, the Lincoln pea. Um, I just thought looked good. It says performs better. Then many in warmer weather. It's a bush variety, which I like. Um, and so I got those. Then I've got the Magnolia Blossom Tendril. I watch a lot of the videos from uh, Roots and Refuge Farm because I just love them. They're awesome. Um, I think Jess is very genuine, and I enjoy learning from her. And she talks about how if you're going to grow something, uh, it should bring you joy. And she grows these because of how pretty the little flowers are and I can totally relate to that if something's not beautiful um, I mean why so if it's tasty and it does well great but if it looks pretty 
it's just, I don't know, it's those special little things in life that really mean a lot to me. Another one kind of like that, it's a purple potted sugar snap pea. You can eat it straight from the garden. Um, and it's very uh, hyper tendril plant, which makes it easier to, to see which ones are ready to pick. So I'm pretty excited about that, but I've never grown anything like this before, so we'll see how it turns out. What else should we look at? Ooh, cucumbers. Cucumbers. We did, I did get a lot of cucumbers. I got, um, well, I got more coming from M.I. Gardener. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so this is a dragon's egg cucumber. They're small, white cucumbers. Um, again, we're growing a kid's garden, specifically trying to get kids interested in vegetables. Um, I thought these would be awesome. So, going to grow them on a trellis, hoping that they, they say they're bitter free. So, can't go wrong. These, I'm super excited about. They're the Burr, West Indies Burr Gherkin, and they're spiky. Who doesn't love spiky? I mean, yes, be able to, you know, throw spike balls at each other. Yeah. Self-defense against animals. Um, it says it's good for pickling. And also on the website, it talked about some, uh, a president, I feel like, that was lobbed gherkins, and this was one that he really liked. Uh, I don't remember who it was. I want to say it was Thomas Jefferson. And so I was like, hey, so if the president likes it, may as well try it. All right, this one we're really excited about. It's a carrot. I don't know how to say the name of it. Man, man, pukaji. Man, pukaji. Man, pukaji. Man, pukaji. It is a really long, long carrot. It says, can easily reach over two feet in length when grown in the right soil. Um, so we're going to put some effort towards growing some of these, uh, some of these really long carrots. Um, our family, every year, along with peas, we grow carrots every year. Um, I have pictures of the kids when they were just toddlers holding up bunches of carrots as big as them. Um, it just brings us a lot of joy, so I'm excited to actually grow carrots as big as them again. So we'll see. Yeah. I don't know, you're pretty big, so. I mean, as big as my head. Yeah, you know, as big as your head, so. Peppers. You want to introduce some of these, or do you know the, or do you want me to keep doing it? Uh, Probably I'll do these. Cause I don't know, like you're the one who knows everything. <laughs> I don't know how you got so much information. Cause I, despite contrary belief, I am very smart. I don't know, actually I'm not. It's okay. Uh, this is an arroz con po pollo. Polo. Pollo. Play. It means chicken. I don't know what arose, arose means, but it's something with chicken. Um, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll let you guys know. But these are supposed to be seasoning peppers, which I've never grown any peppers for seasoning. I've only ever grown like really spicy ones, which I don't really use a ton of. And then uh, like bell peppers or something like that. And so I don't really grow ones for flavor, but we love pepper flavored stuff like chili and um, making stews and stuff like that and so I thought this was highly recommended by some people I follow on YouTube so I'm gonna try that one this one I'm super excited about it is a sugar rush peach pepper um, it is a hot pepper but it is um, it is also very sweet um, and so sometimes you want a hot pepper and we do like spicy food in our house but I just thought, and also just the name of it, peach. Peach is one of my favorite colors and uh, and, and fruits. And so I was excited about that. Um, tropical flavor, smoky, complex heat. I'm excited. Should be good. Another one I'm really excited about, habanada. It's habanero peppers with no spice. Yeah. So flavor of a habanero, but without the spice, without any heat. Stunning tangerine color, it says. So, um... I think this will be sweet. Also, it could be a really cool joke to be like, look, I'm going to eat a habanero. Ha, ha, it's not even funny. Or it's not even hot. But I think we got some other spicy peppers coming from M.I. Gardener. But we're not doing a ton of spicy ones. Uh, usually, you can find someone with a jalapeno plant. Interesting. So, yes. So, we've got some melons. Um, you want to introduce this one when I'm done? Because sure. you know a little bit about that one. I mean... I got this one. It's Collective Farm Woman. Um, looks kind of ugly from the outside. I mean, it's not pretty, let's be honest, guys. But on the inside, it just looks sweet and beautiful. Um, it's uh, ripens to a yellowish gold and white flesh. 
high sugar content, uh, ripens early even in Russia. And so I just thought, I really wanted to grow melons, but I figured in Michigan, it is hard. It has a shorter growing season. So we're hoping that this will produce some nice melons hanging on a trellis maybe, um, like an archway that the kids could enjoy. Again, I want to get them to, to taste something that they're really going to like. Next is the early moonbeam. Let me hold it right up. Melon. And it comes the it is earlier by about 75 60 days or no not 60 80 days. Oh, I think that it was like some of the plants were 80 days and this one was like 75 or 70. So it was a little bit short. It grew like maybe 10 days earlier, like matured maybe 10 days earlier. So, and it's not that big, five to eight pounds. Um, and it's specifically for Oregon conditions. Maybe it'll do well in Michigan. We don't know. But um, but this is Malachi's goal, right? This is your goal this year? Grow a watermelon. Grow a watermelon. We've got other watermelons coming from MI Gardener, but they haven't come yet. We ordered these on the same day, MI Gardener and these on the same day. So um, we'll see. Next one is another new and cool one from Baker Creek. It is the Bitter Melon. I specifically got these white ones, number one, because of the texture. I'm trying to make the garden that we grow um, a sensory garden as well. That It's just lots of sound, like sights, touch, colors, scents. Um, and this is just, these are just so unique and to be stark white like that, even if they don't enjoy the taste of a bitter melon, which I have no idea because I've never tried it, um, that it's just a really cool looking melon, um, to grow in the garden. I'm really hoping that we can integrate this into some stir fries here in our house, but also possibly teach the kids to integrate it into theirs. Um, it grows in a place in Japan that they're known to have one of the longest lifespans of all the whole world um and they have a this a lot of bitter melon in their diet and so it's kind of like a hot topic right now that a lot of people have talked about um so it's really cool to be able to grow these i've never seen them before so um hopefully they do well in our climate we'll we'll let you know now your favorite lettuces so i have never successfully grown lettuce before <laughs> i've tried and they've never gotten bigger than just a little leaf and i I don't know what I do wrong. Um, I think it has to do with just like it gets too hot. I I just don't really put a lot of attention to them. I'm just like lettuce. Mostly it's like tomatoes and the, some of the bigger plants. So this is another one that got, was recommended by Jess at Roots and Refuge. Um, it's Marvel of Four Seasons. Um, I think here in Michigan that there's a good chance that this could do well. I think it's beautiful. I like the little blushed purple on the leaves. Um, and so I'm hoping that we can grow it. It's really all I got about that. It's, um, French and fingers crossed guys. Cause I also think that'd be a great thing for, for the kids at the school. Um, oh, my phone is ringing. Though, Cause we don't know who it is. Yeah. All right. This is a radicchio. Radicchio, I don't really know how people say it, but it's um, like the purple stuff that you find in in, um, in classic salad mix. Uh, but this is just gorgeous. I'm going to show it one more time. Look at it. I don't know if it's going to if it's gonna view well or not. But it's just beautiful. Speckled and um, light green and dark purple together. Um, it's a fall crop, but... I'm hoping that if we can do it in early in early uh, spring that maybe we can try it again too. If not, we'll do it in fall. So, got that going on. Now, on to our last thing, or our second to last thing. We've got some tomatoes. So, we've got more coming from MI Gardener, uh, quite a few actually. But, we've got the blue cream berries. We wanted to get some that had that blue tint in it that says it helps protect them from the sun. Um, and these are good and known to not split. Um... This one is one that is famous among tomato growers for being one of the best tasting ones. It's a Paul Robeson. Um, I love tomatoes. I personally grew up eating tomatoes right out of the garden and there's this flavor that you can get. Like as a kid, I remember biting into a tomato and it, it's like it tasted like the sun. 
Like it was just, oh, just like, like the perfect bite. I haven't really had a tomato like that in a really long time. Um, even the tomatoes that we grow here, like they've just been ones that we bought plants from the store. And so we're kind of going out on a limb, trying some more heirloom varieties and hoping, um, hoping that it works out. Um, all right, this is another one that I'm nervous about, but it looks really, really cool. It's Brad's Atomic Grape. I don't know if you can see it, if it's going to just continue to try to zoom in on me and Malachi, but um, they're purple and striped and, and yellow and red and just green. They look gorgeous. Um, they are uh, supposed to be a great tomato, but I, I've read some comments, so I ordered these. And in Instagram, on Instagram and on, um, I think maybe it was Facebook, there were comments under the advertisements for these. And people were like, I planted them and they didn't grow. None of them grow. Uh, I planted them and they all split. I planted them and they were huge. They weren't cherry tomatoes. I planted them and they didn't taste that good. And there was a couple of people who said I love them. Um, but a lot of people who said that they planted theirs and none of them grew. So we'll see if we can grow ours. Um, I am still really excited about it, about it. They're supposed to be amazing, so, um, we're just going to give it a shot and see what happens. Now I'll try to move the light, so now the shadows are coming up from here. Um, alright, so, there's a few free stuff that we got, which is awesome. We got a free gift, which is a dill bouquet, which is awesome because I wanted dill plants. To attract some pollinators and also for pickling. This is bee balm lemon. Oh, that's so exciting. Bee balm. I wanted some flowers, some bee balm. Um, again, to attract some, some bees and stuff like that. That's very exciting. We showed you this one already. This is the purple Prussian tomato. Russian. Purple Russian tomato. I'm excited about that. And this is an amarillo carrot. So this looks like, probably if it's amarillo, I bet you it's yellow yes look at this yellow carrots. yellow yellow carrots exciting more carrots so so yeah anyways that's our haul this is a lot of seeds people let's take a look at them this is how many it's seeds we got recommendations for whole seeds we'll be able to tell you what grows and what doesn't in a couple of weeks and set up and set up how we do it um, we're probably going to do that here in a minute. I don't really know. Maybe we'll Maybe. take everybody to the basement. What do you think, Mel? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. Are we going to do it right now or are we going to do it later? Uh, now. All right. So check back with us. We're going to show you how we're planting our seeds. We spent a lot of money on the seeds themselves, but we're trying to plant them on a budget. So until next time, folks. Until next time. We'll see you later. Yeah.